Hello YouTubers, um, this is my proper full-on review for God of War Chains of Olympus. As you see I've hooked up the PSP to my um, HDTV with the component cables so you can see like a bigger scale of the thing instead of the small image on the PSP. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll walk through, I'll tell you all the stuff that's happening in the game and all the new stuff and whatnot. So first of all I'll start off with the menu screen just like the old God of War games from 1 and 2. This is where you power up the weapons. This is the Blades of Chaos. This is the magic. The yeah, this is the magic obtained by battling that, that Persian guy. I've just started the normal, but I've already completed in game, so I'm just showing you. These are the other weapons you'll probably get, but they've just like pushed them out right now. So right now I've just finished playing this little six game that's in the thing as well. So I'll move back from it. The controls are basically the same as the PS2 version from For God of War 1 and 2. The square button is to do the light, attach triangles for heavy and circles to grab them like this and just kill them up for the close combat. And you can just do combinations, X square, square and all that stuff. As you can see, I need to get um, at this level. You need to um, kill these geezers first, and then you have to knock the ladders off so that stop them from coming. Then you gotta pull this catapult, or well, not catapult, but the bow towards him. The basilisk, or whatever it's called, the monster. One thing I've noticed in this game is a lot of um, you got a, a lot of um, button combinations like this little mini game. You got to quickly press triangle X or the other one. Oh shit! And um, you have to oh you have to do a lot of toggle stuff as well. So I thought that was pretty good as well. Graphics are superb for the PSP version. I was very happy with them. There's no slowdown, no lags, no glitches, no nothing. This is a perfect conversion from the PS2 version. Of course in the PS2 version you have a right analog stick where you can dodge but in the PSP they don't have a right one so you have to hold L1 and R1 to dodge so you can hold like that and just move it with the toggle and dodge and whatnot. And when you need to open up boxes um, you have to hold circle instead of um, L2 or R1 in the PS2 version. I'm just wasting time and just to um, let these enemies keep coming so I can just get orbs and power up my weapon to thing. There are I'll carry on getting I want to look there. The level designs were pretty good, uh, even though you're in, you don't really get to explore much, like you're only in a few levels. The, the game is pretty short. Um, the normal completion time is 4 hours, but I clocked it in 5 hours since I left the game on and um, I started talking on MSN and while the game was on, so that clocked another hour too. But the game is pretty short, but um, it's well worth it. So if you have a PSP, I'd definitely recommend you get this game.
So what are those? So once I get out here, we'll be um, we'll nearly be at that boss level. We've but finally when you have to finally battle that basilisk there. He's that big um, lizard monster thing running loose in the city. Now Cyclops will pop out and then um, you have to quickly kill these um. To avoid getting hit, you should really use the the dodging buttons R1 and L1, and to use the top of the rail does help. I'm purposely just using the light attack so I can kill him in style where the circle emerges on his head, and you have to do the button combinations to show you how it is. Because normally if you press triangle, he'll be dead right now. Like just because the heavy attacks finish the enemies are quite quickly. Right uh, now. So yeah, that's what all that's all the fun's about. Best thing to do is once you've done like a big battle or you know just finished fighting, always explore every nook and cranny of the level. There's always items you can find. Just have a good look around before progressing so you don't miss anything. Break even those boxes and stuff, get orbs out of them and everything. Nearly powered it off. Best thing to do when as soon as you start the game, you power up the blades of hills first, because that's the weapon you're mostly like, like using in the game. So it's best to power them up to the max.
Um, these feathers are to power up your magic and those um, eyeballs that you might have seen before is to power up your life. So once you um, get all of them, and you can power up your life and magic. That's the green, the green bar on the left hand corner. And then just kill this person before I show you. Basically, this is a pictures. It's not the common here. The green one is your life, and the blue bar is your magic. Basically, right, let's go for more of these. Can't stop popping up. It's like these bastards don't want to die, man. Just keep popping up. Maybe you Let's quickly go down for more stuff popping up. Yeah, the battle is close now. As soon as I go through that door up there, and he'll be waiting out there, the bus. So I'll just quickly break all the boxes, get all the orbs and stuff from there. Don't really need that. Oh, no, it, yeah, it's close now. But I'll quickly do some. Yeah, after this is the fight, actually. The puzzles are pretty basic in this game um, I was playing solid for five hours as I said before and um, I never got stuck out in none of the parts. There was one part that um, uh, I did get stuck out but it was, I figured it out after within a few minutes but that's about it. There weren't any like proper mind puzzles where you got to use your mind and try to hack you know, what's going on. Mostly just going around, just, you know, need to open doors or something you'll be like Picking up dead bodies or moving big blocks and stuff like that. And battling demons to get to your next objective and stuff like that. Or exploring and stuff. So close. Of course, like once you powered up your weapons, like okay, now since it's powered up, so now I've got a new power L1 square. Right, let's try this out. Yeah, so that's the move from God of War 2, if you guys remember. And you can do this in media as well. Like that. So right now I've got to take this box and there's a switch over there we've got to keep it at. Let's quickly explore down here. I better take care of these um, faggots. Yeah, 
there's the dead body I've got to pick up after and leave this box into place. If you um, hold circle and hold L R1, he'll power up like this and you let go of R1 and he'll throw it like that. It's easier than move, just holding circle and moving, it moves really slowly. It take ages to, like, to open doors and stuff. So you just hold it fully down, you hear it, you hear him making this and stuff and you just slide it across like that. Simple stuff like that basically. It's like you kill a few people and um and the door open. Now the the final fight happens. This is not the final fight in the game, but this is the final um, battle that you have uh, with the basilisk that gives you raving havoc in the city. You'll see him will come in a bit now. This is just like right at the start of the game. Basically. Basically you just have to keep doing the heavy attacks and just blocking and jumping and does the fire attack like that and just jump over it. I just need to pull together two seconds on the phone. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, safe. Uh, I'm making a video right now. Oh, I just came back, man. I went out, innit? Had to go get some CVs in. I had to give some CVs to shop and stuff. Oh, I'll see you, man. Because that uh, thing, the teacher's coming as well, the Islamic teacher. I'll come tomorrow if you want. Yeah, just film me and text me tomorrow, and uh, let me know. Safe here. Sorry about that, let's get back to the fight. Now you just have to quickly um, dodge his fire attacks and keep moving. And with the toggle you just have to quickly just ram it like that and then you just lose. So. This is the other magic, this is the first magic power you've obtained.
best thing to do is once play the boss fights like once through. So you, once you get like an idea of what's happening, then you know like the pattern that the enemy moves in and the moves that he's always doing and stuff like that. So you have a better chance of um, beating them. Oh damn, I missed the thing. Sometimes those um, things come out so fast you miss them completely. Then you just have to quickly button bash circle and break his jaw and that's it and that's it finished. And that's the boss fight finished. There's not any like proper like CGI cutscenes or anything like that, but the graphics for the videos like these are excellent for the PSP. But that's basically the starting of the main story of what the uh, Change of Limits is about. So basically, uh, that's all there is basically for this thing. Well, I can't really play the whole game right now because I don't have enough memory space to record everything. But this is basically the main gist of the game and what happened. Overall, I fully enjoyed this and I rated this 10 out of 10. Best PS PSP game I've played. There's not many good games like this out on the market that actually do a pretty good job and you can actually like, enjoy playing it. Without any glitches or like lags or slowdowns or any mistakes or anything like that. 
So that concludes my review for God of War Chains of Olympus for the PSP. If you are a God of War fan and um, you've enjoyed the PS2 versions and you're waiting for God of War 3 for the PS3, then I definitely recommend this get um, the PSP version if you have a PSP and um, you know play this while you're waiting for you'll be waiting for a long time for the PS3 version. That's like in 2009. But you know. This is definitely worth getting. So that's the Maru for God of War for, um, PSP. And um, hope you enjoyed it. If there's any questions, post them in below. And uh, if you need any um, um, yeah, walkthroughs or anything, any part, just let me know. I'll see if what I can do. Just before I um, finish, wrap this review up. To show you one last thing. The treasures, as you can see, I've unlocked every single one. Challenge one, two, three. You, if you start this on normal, depending on what level you play first, I'll just quickly complete the game on easy just to um, get this. And then you get all of them. Basically, um, you have to play number one to unlock two and so on. And they get harder each time. And um, just have fun. The strategy, if you want to know what to do in each one, I can let you know the strategies I use and how I've done them. And there's like costumes that you need to unlock. God mods being like videos, lost levels and other extra stuff in the game. This is the environments that are locked down. Now this is the characters actually. These were the environments I unlocked. Once you've completed this you unlock this and another the lost level video once you've done all the challenges. So uh, once I've um, completed the game on normal, I'll do it on hard. And after I do it God mode, and once I've done all of that, I'll let you um, guys know that how it went and all that. So that's basically the end of um, Chains of Olympus review. And um, if there's any questions, you know, just let me know and stuff. And um, thank you for all the subs 81 subscribers that I've got. Keep um, keep subscribing if you enjoyed the videos. And um, thank all the fam family and friends that have supported me and over these past years. And that's it. See you next time, YouTubers.